say hi? Hello everyone, I'm back. I actually am alive. So today I'm showing you how we made a chrysanthemum cushion. It's a really beautiful cushion which features a combination of colors and fabrics that work so well in harmony together. It's truly a masterpiece. So this cushion is actually available as a complete kit for you to purchase on our shop website. And there's also lots of other embroidery kits available for purchase and they are all designed by Bernadette and they're all amazing. They look so great. But anyway, enough talk and we'll get to the video and thank you very much. First, we are gonna start by properly stabilizing the fabrics. So Bernadette always first stabilizes the fabrics with a fusible woven interfacing, then finishes the process with a fusible pellon. Next, she uses her Premier Plus 2 embroidery software to print out the design as a template. In the notes, there will be JPEG images for you to print in case you don't have the software. She uses transparent paper to print her templates as the see-through aspect is convenient for placement. Even though this is the case, plain paper can also be used. She trims them back, then sticks the designs together to create a real life-size template. I always print out embroidery designs which require precise placement as this process ensures you achieve a professional result and also gives you an idea on how your project will look before it is stitched out. This is a massive bonus of having an embroidery software. Bernadette now has three templates for three hoopings. Each template is marked with a center intersecting line for placement. She studies the picture in her notes to place the designs on the fabric in the same manner. Finding the place where the lines intersect, Bernadette uses her awl to create a hole in the template and then proceeds to create a hole at a random point along all four lines. She'll do this for all three separate templates. Then she uses her blue marking pen to mark where she previously punched the templates. Basically, she is using these markings to recreate the intersecting lines on all three templates. She draws a circle around where the lines intersect so she can easily find the centers. Now she hoops up her big hoop with tearaway stabilizer. And cuts another piece to slide underneath. Today Bernadette will be using the top of the line faff machine, the creative icon. As you can see, she opens the design on her machine from a USB stick. Oh, how perfect is that screen quality? In the embroidery edit screen, which she has just pressed, Bernadette will select the precise positioning function. In this screen, she can find the center of her design and line that up with the center marking on her fabric. The four lines will be aligned so they match up with the notches in the hoop. Once everything is lined up, Bernadette locks the fabric to the stabilizer by safety pinning the layers together. When it comes to embroidery, we always base the fabric to the stabilizer as opposed to hooping up the fabric. This allows for better positioning and it will be an overall easier process. Once it is basted, we can start embroidering. But don't forget to slide under the extra tear away like Bernadette did. Once 
Once you cut out the back pieces, you should have something that looks like this. Fold the flap in half and press it so it sits there nicely. And then place it on the main back piece like so. Then Bernadette marks on the zip how big the seam is. This prevents the fabric from stretching out of place while she's sewing. First she will baste the flap to the main back piece. Then she will lay the zip on top, lining up those lines and roughly sewing that down too. Then she will go in with the zipper foot and stitch nice and close to the zipper teeth for a professional seam. Once that's all stitched, Bernadette pins the bottom half to the other side of the zipper while it is still closed. Once it is pinned on both ends, she unzips the zip and pins the rest. This process ensures that the bottom half will be perfectly aligned with the top half. She will proceed to stitch this in the same manner as she stitched the first part of the zip. She stitches a straight stitch across where the zip starts and ends so the zipper slider doesn't fall off. Now she is making the piping. She will always join this type of thing on the cross even though it is not cut on the bias. It looks a lot more professional and less noticeable. She carefully bastes the piping cord into the fabric using her appropriate foot to ensure her stitching is close to the cord. When it comes to the seam, just press it open with your fingers and then close it up like so. In the meantime, the machine has magically finished stitching the first hooping of the chrysanthemums. Unpick the base and rip it from the tearaway. For the second hooping, Bernadette does the exact same precise positioning technique as the first hooping. She lines up the centre, then lines up the intersecting lines with the notches on her hoop. Then she pins it down. And then bases it on. Also, you can tell which way the design will stitch out based on how it is presented on the screen. So you literally position the fabric in a way where the design looks like the right way up. And up to the third hooping, you get the process by now. Hoop up, tear away underneath, place fabric properly, Based, then let the machine do its magic. Oh, it's so satisfying to watch. Here is what the design should look like. Next is to base on the piping to the embroidered piece. Create the join at the bottom so it is more inconspicuous. When it comes to the corners, just clip in the piping and then turn it like so. This will create a perfect square quarter. 
When you come to the end, just cross over the ends like so and then stitch them down. Now we can partially open the zip for the back piece. You need a, a hole to turn it inside out later on. Pin it right sides together with the front piece and sew from the side where the previous line of the piping stitch is seen. This way you can stitch in the piping as accurate as possible. When you go over the corners, you can do a diagonal stitch. This way it makes your stitching nice and close to the piping. When turning through the corners, just fold them along the seam like so, and then push them through. Bernadette never clips her corners, cause she's scared that this might create a hole when you're poking and pushing. Once it's all turned through, you can zip it up Give it a press. And then put it somewhere where everyone can admire its prettiness. And that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for staying until the end. I really hope you learned something new and perhaps inspired you to do some embroidery. I've noticed that over the past year, this little YouTube channel has kind of grown slowly, slowly, and it really makes me happy that people still subscribe, even though I'm not active, but I will try and stay as active as possible. It will definitely happen in the future. So hopefully you can all keep up with the videos and thanks again for watching.